In this month's Math Counts Mini, we're going to tackle a couple arithmetic sequence and series problems. We're going to start right here. We have an arithmetic sequence. Third term is 165. The twelfth term is 615. And we want to find the value of n such that the nth term is 2015. I have to start off by remembering what an arithmetic sequence is. In arithmetic sequence, we start at some first term. I'm going to call that x. And then to get to the second term, we add on some amount. I'm going to call that d. So the next term is x plus d. And then each term after that, we keep adding on that same d amount. So to get from the first to the second, we add another d. We have x plus 2d. Add another d. To get to the next term, we have x plus 3d, then x plus 4d, and on and on we go. And this is what we mean by an arithmetic sequence. And in a lot of problems involving arithmetic sequence and series, this is actually how I start every single time I write each term that I care about in terms of the first term, in terms of this d, this common difference, this step that we take to get from each term to the next, because then I can use these expressions to build equations. That's what we're going to try to do here. We've got the third term is 165. Well, the third term is right there. Let's take a look. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. Fifth term, and on we go. So we see to get to the third term, we start at the first term and we take two steps, not three steps, we take two steps to get from the first term to the third term. And that gives us our first equation in terms of x and d. We have x plus 2d equals 165. And we're going to build another equation from this right here, the twelfth term. To get to the twelfth term, we start at the first term and we take 11 steps, not 12. We take 11 steps to get out to the twelfth term, so we have another equation. x plus 11d is 615. And now I have a system of equations. I know how to handle this. I'll subtract the first equation from the second equation. That'll eliminate x. And just leave me on the left-hand side with 9d. And on the right-hand side, I subtract this. I'll get 450. Divide both sides by 9, and now we know that d is 50. I'll take this 50, put it back in this first equation up here, and I'll have x plus 100 equals 165. Subtract 100 from both sides, and now we know that x is 65. So now that I know what x and d are, I know what my sequence is. So now it's time to find n. We built an equation from this in terms of x and d. We built an equation from this. Now we're going to build an equation for that a sub n, the nth term, we start at the first term and then we add on n minus 1 steps. We take n minus 1 steps to get out to the nth term, not n steps. And again, if you don't see it, take a look what we have here. First term is x, second term we take one step, third term we take two steps, fourth term we take three steps, nth term we take n minus 1 steps. And we know from here that that nth term is 2015. So now we'll drop in our values of x and d into this equation. And we have 65 plus d is 50, so we have 50 times n minus 1. And all this equals that 2015. So now we're going to simplify the left-hand side. We split the 50 times the n, that's 50n. And we have the 65 plus 50 times the minus 1 gives us a minus 50 over there. So when we simplify this left-hand side, we'll have 50n plus 15, 65 minus 50. And that's going to equal 2015. Subtract 15 from both sides. We have 50n is 2,000. Divide both sides by 50, and we get n is 40. So that's an example of how when we write out our sequence in terms of the first term and this common difference here, we can usually set up equations and grind through to the answer. But sometimes there's a little bit slicker way to tackle the problem. Let's try that here. Instead of writing out the whole sequence in terms of x and d, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to think about what my arithmetic sequence means. When I go from the third term to the twelfth term, I'm going to take nine steps to get from the third term out to the twelfth term. So I know that each step is this 615 minus 165. That's how far I'm going to go during these nine steps. I'm going to divide by nine. I need to take nine steps to get from 165 all the way out to 615. And of course, that's 615 minus 165. We've already done that. That's 450 divided by nine. 
And now we see immediately that each step has length 50. All right, and this is just the same work that we just did with all that algebra, but instead we're kind of skipping a few steps here by thinking about what an arithmetic sequence means and thinking in terms of these steps, these nine steps we take to get from the third term out to the twelfth term. And then, well, to figure out this n, we're going to look at how far we're going to go from 615 all the way out to 2015. We're going to take some number of steps. Well, we know what distance we have to take. This 2000, to get to 2015 from 615, we need to go 1400. And we know that each step has length 50. So we divide by 50 there. And 1400 divided by 50 is 28. So we need to take 28 steps to get from the 12th term out to this nth term. So you take 28 steps from the 12th term here all the way out to the 40th term. And we'd be really scared if we'd gotten a different answer here. And this is one of the golden standards for knowing that you have the answer correct is to do the problem two apparently completely different ways to get the same answer. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we have an arithmetic sequence. First term is A. Common difference is D. And we're told that the sum of the first 10 terms is half the sum of the next 10 terms. What's the ratio A over D? Well, I'd like to find a clever way to do this like we did in that second solution before, but I don't see it. So we're going to jump right into writing out the sequence in terms of the first term and the common difference. I'll tackle these first 10 terms. We've got A, then a plus D, A plus 2D, on and on and on. Now, out at the end, well, I want 10 terms. So to get out to the 10th term, start at the first term, I take 9 steps to get out to the 10th term. So my last two terms of this are going to be A plus 8D and A plus 9D. These are going to be my last two terms when I write out the first 10 terms of the sequence. So let's say I want the sum of the first 10 terms. So I want the sum of this. Now to sum an arithmetic sequence, we can do a really clever trick here. I'm going to take the first term and the last term here, add these two up, we get 2a plus 9d. I add these two up, I also get 2a plus 9d. I take this one and the one before this is a plus 7d. Add those two up, we get a 2a plus 9d. So each pair. When I go from the ends, 2a plus 9d, 2a plus 9d, 2a plus 9d, all the way in. I have 10 terms total, so I have five pairs, and each pair has some 2a plus 9d. All right, so let's move on to the next 10 terms. Well, the first one, of course, is a plus 10d, then a plus 11d, and we just keep on going, keep on going. The last two terms now will be a plus 18d and a plus 19d. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to get the sum here. First term, last term, add those two up, you get 2a plus 20d. This term plus this term, add them up, 2a plus 29d. 2a plus 29d, on and on and on. Ten terms total, that gives me five pairs. Each pair adds up to 2a plus 29d. So now I have expressions. I have expressions for these two sums and I can keep reading. Sum of the first 10 terms is half the sum of the next 10 terms. Well, that means that double the first sum equals the second sum. So now I can write an equation. Double the first sum equals the second sum, because the first sum is half the second one. Now notice I didn't multiply these out when I wrote out these expressions for the sums. That's called being strategically lazy. Because look how convenient this is. I can just cancel these factors if I divide both sides by 5, and those go away. It gives me a much simpler equation to deal with. Now I'm going to multiply out the left side here. I'm going to have 4a plus 18d. And over here, I still have just 2a plus 29d. Oh, yeah, I've got to remember, what are we looking for here? We're looking for a over d. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. 
going to subtract 2a from both sides, subtract 18d from both sides, and I'm going to have 2a equals 11d. I'm looking for a over d, so I'm going to divide both sides by d, divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to find out that a over d is 11 over 2, and we're done.